Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending this webinar event presented by Ingram MicroCloud, devoted to helping you build a strategic cybersecurity practice. This is the third webcast in our series devoted to helping our partners grow what the industry estimates to be an $129 billion industry by 2025, and that is security. So for today's webinar, Building a Seamless Security Roadmap with Cybersecurity Assessments, we have guest Brian Verberg, Senior Manager Security COE at Ingram Micro, and Dennis Doles, ISV Business Lead at QS Solutions, who will be guiding this session on why partners should be adopting a cybersecurity assessment as the right thing to do for their business. My name is Brianna Lau, Global Growth Solutions Lead for Seamless Security here at Ingram. And before I get started, I wanted to leave some housekeeping notes. Uh, because this webcast is live, we are currently streaming on Teams webinar. If you wish to share this webcast as an on-demand tool for your colleagues or to re-listen to this, we will be sending a consolidated email uh, within 24 hours with the link to the presentation deck, the link to the recording, and some of the quick links that we have around some of the content that we've presented today. And because we are also live, um, please use our Q&A window or our chat window to arise any questions that you might have from the content that's being presented. We do have some time at the end of our presentation to address these live. So would love if you have um, the opportunity to come off mute to ask that question if it's something that you'd like to ask our guests. So for today's agenda, uh, we're gonna be talking about you know, what is the growth opportunity with security today? Talking about how Ingram's looking at growth opportunity across four pillars. We're gonna be introducing QS Solutions and having Dennis preview kind of his company and, and what they do. We're also gonna be talking about the transformation of partners and how to become more profitable, profitable by extending managed services. The difference between Microsoft Secure Score and CSAT, which is something that I know it's a, a common question that partners ask on what is the di difference and variance between the two. And then lastly, finishing it off with how to engage our center of excellence, really uh, the really process, the results of what our team can support you as a partner through in, in getting those cybersecurity scans done for your customers. And then we'll close for Q&A um, and next steps. So to kick it off, go to the next slide. I want to introduce to you what we believe as growth areas for partners to maximize profitability and really accommodate to how customers are looking at uh, their, their focus in terms of IT budget and spend in the next couple of years. So here at Ingram, we've become quite growth obsessed in helping our partners organize and define their focus areas of where we believe they can drive the most business outcomes and accelerated growth. Our mission is entirely focused on becoming a customer-centric organization, guiding partners on leading with solutions that customers are demanding for, which we've narrowed down into four pillars. The first one is modern cloud platforms, which is all about building app modernization services and supporting the elements around data and insights. The next is uh, seamless security, which we have um, renamed our cybersecurity focus. And this represents an $129 billion industry that's mainly broken down into areas like endpoint security, identity security, and security operations. The third, connected workplace, which is all about collaboration apps, virtual desktops, and the general digital experience for employees. And then lastly, business performance, which is all about CRM, ERP, and workforce automation. But because we are focused on seamless security, I really want to talk and drive down on the growth opportunity here. Um, we've gathered from various reports, Forrester, Gartner, IDC, and uh, referencing some things from IDC in terms of what they've published around what IT decision makers are thinking of spending in the next couple of years, they were able to show that most of the spend in relation to cybersecurity is more so gonna be around the products and services 
Um, and this spend is actually outperforming the growth of overall IT spending as a whole. Uh, we actually found that within certain industries that are much more mature, like banking, discrete manufacturing, professional services, and public service like federal and central government, these four industries will actually account for more than one third of all overall security spending within 2023 and onwards. So in regards to this whole bucket of spend that's estimated to come from the industry, whether it's SMB or enterprise, software actually represents nearly half of all security spend this year. And the three main things um, of which IDC pointed out to in terms of spend for software is endpoint being number one in, in leading in the software category for prioritized spend, then identity security, followed by SOAR and SIEM tool sets that compromise um, the, uh, compose the security operations tool sets. So we also understand that services is gonna be the second largest group spend where managed security services is actually estimated to be in the $42 billion mark in spending alone for 2023 this year. And that's only gonna grow as, you know, security talent is exacerbated and it's becoming extremely hard to find and hire and train for qualified security analysts to, to take on that role as a security individual within an organization. So our goal here at Ingram is really to provide not only the solutions, but also the services that partners need to support their growth in building these security services, especially around endpoint security, identity security, and security operations. And the market for simplifying security and helping partners build managed, managed services is our ultimate goal as, as a whole as we move forward into um, how we're supporting partners further on. So I want to quickly talk about um, what our current landscape really has installed for our partners. Um, as we talk about SaaS security, Microsoft is usually the number one business critical application that your customers are using on a day-to-day -day basis. But the reality is, is that Microsoft 365 is also the most targeted applications if you're a hacker with most of these attacks coming from Russian uh, uh, companies that are trying to infiltrate in terms of um, uh, breaches and stuff that happen within our day-to-day -day base. Um, what's also really great to consider is Microsoft 365 can be highly secure and it's highly configurable at the same time. But the reality is, is that if you're not doing consistent checkups or monitoring Microsoft 365 for things like MFA, um, your customer security policies and health can easily change. So when we talk about security and compliance, you know, the reason why we're having this conversation today is your customers, whether or not they take your advice, they are leaning on you when it comes to the safety of their systems. So when we look at stats here, like 89% of Microsoft 365 accounts do not have MFA properly, pro properly enabled. You know, over 1.2 million Microsoft accounts are being breached every month. Um, and nearly 65% of known cloud security instances are due to misconfigurations uh, with identity. Um, it's no reason why, you know, MFA and IAM configurations is a reasonable challenge for MSPs to get their hands around. Um, and if properly set up by their, their partner, you know, users are up to 99% less likely to have their account compromised. The next challenge here is, you know, all those SaaS applications beyond Microsoft 365, which may refer to shadow IT. So how do you discover all those applications? How do you get visibility to all the applications, whether in the cloud or locally installed that your customers are using without some sort of audit, right? So how many SaaS applications are you confident as an MSP and are 100% in knowing what your customers or prospective customers are using that are compliant? And are you able to give an accurate answer to that? You know, the reason why we're talking today about cybersecurity assessments is this is really a tool set that you can put in your arsenal to provide an accurate answer 
whether you're looking at skeletons at the beginning of your relationship with a new customer or in the middle of the relationship as a health check to ensure that there's no relevant security risk that can be imposed by shadow IT. So switching gears, um, we understand that really adopting and becoming a security first MSP is truly a journey. Um, and how we're supporting our partners in building the repeatable managed services speaks to you know, what stage of that process you're on. Um, around the Help Me Do It, there's really two ways that Ingram can help our partners support and augment their service bench. The first, which we're deep diving today, is around our complementary cybersecurity scans that are delivered through our Center of Excellences that are located worldwide. Um, and all of our partners, Ingram partners, are actually eligible to uh, deliver two scans to their customer using our technical team to help provide the reporting, the analysis, and the recommendations for you to bring to your customer. Um, and this is really a scope of a half day kind of quick scan to really uncover the gaps with you and the customer in that conversation and make a security conversation a lot easier with Ingram's technical team um, with, with you to support that. The second is our P2P network of partners. Um, that can support around professional services, right? So we did talk about configuration of Microsoft 365, how you know, you know, uh, bad actors are targeting Microsoft 365 just because of the demand and scale of the number of customers using this. And without proper implementation, um, that can be a source of threat when it comes to these bad actors coming through and compromising these systems. So enabling you know, our group of P2P partners to help you deploy some of the elements in, let's say, Microsoft 365 Business Premium, like mobile device management, MFA, endpoint security with Defender for Business as a one-time fixed cost, fixed scope service is something that's available for partners on our cloud marketplace. When we switch gears to manage it for me, within our cloud marketplace, we also have various MDR providers that supplement some of the tool sets and EDR tools like Defender for Business or Defend for Endpoint and help provide partners with some of the detection and remediation services that customers are expe extend, uh, expecting for and extending their team and the, uh, the usage of their EDR tools to provide real feedback. The third, set me up for success. This is something that I love talking about because yearly we actually have a program built for partners that want to build that next stage of their, um, their business in delivering security managed services. And we actually have a three month program called our security expert program that uh, builds up partners with the right framework, the right funding, the right technical capabilities so that they can eventually build their business model within a three month process rather than the six to nine months that it usually takes partners to develop this. And we recently actually gathered um, a five-star rating for CRN around this program. So very happy to share that. And then lastly, around training, right? So we actually performed a survey for our partners where training and certification was actually one of the number one roadblocks of a partner and their success towards building a security practice. We've actually built an ex uh, exclusive partnership with Pluralsight where um, as an on-demand LMS platform, your employees or your customers' employees can actually purchase subscriptions through you, through our cloud marketplace, where they can get certified on some of the vendor-led certification like Microsoft, or even some of the, uh, the vendor agnostic tool sets like CompTIA or ISC Squared um, that will help improve your associates in their security journey as a knowledgeable resource. So today um, we are joined with our guests to talk really specifically around cybersecurity scans and utilizing our center of excellence. I want to introduce to you Dennis Doles, who comes from QS Solutions, um, which is actually the tool set and technology that underpins how our center of excellence supports partners on their journey and qualifying um, you know, your customers' environments with real data to improve their security posture and opportunity. So I'd love to pass it to Dennis. Thank you, Brianna. Delighted to be here, and thanks uh, for the opportunity. 
good morning and good afternoon uh, for to all the all the attendees here. Um, thank you very much for uh, for stopping by. Um, just a brief introduction on OQS solutions to start with, and then we will go into the topic. What about cybersecurity assessments? How can this be of help? And how can, how does it help me, like Brianna mentioned, develop uh, my security practice and become a security focused managed service provider? QS solutions is um, is headquartered in the Netherlands, where an uh, independent software vendor focused on developing software solutions in security governance and migration area long-time Microsoft partner um, and a strong focus to go to market through partners. So our go to market strategy is solely around partners uh, where we partner with Ingram um, to scale through the SMB channel to you uh, to target end customers in the end to help them improve their cybersecurity posture. We've performed over 6,000 assessments. We started with, with this in 2018. Uh, and now, uh, now are running around 2,000 assessments each year uh, with great return of investment for you as a partner as well, right? So uh, these assessments, it's not just about the assessment, it's actually also about the advisory that you get from the assessment, uh, including all the licensing revenue that comes with it. So that's, that's about QS solutions. Um, and I think to the point that Rihanna already made, there is a huge opportunity out there uh, addressing not only the seamless security and the security addressable market, but also all the others. So I think we're in a perfect uh, world there. Uh, but at the same time, there are some challenges. So let, let's focus on that as well, where we first dive into, OK, how how can we think about our practice and security practice, but maybe even more holistically, what can your managed services uh, uh, practice be with Microsoft? And it, it starts with, uh, with, with cloud migrations and maintaining uh, IT systems operational, your existing managed services, they're probably, Microsoft is probably part, uh, a big part of what you do today. Uh, but there are all many different areas here that you see in the slide. Uh, potentially, the more you move from left to right in the slide, the more, um, the less familiar you will be with, with these uh, areas. So from a cloud migration, optimization services, model workplace, that's pretty much the, the core pillars of probably what your business is today. But then moving into security, compliance, uh, maybe very much focus on a specific vertical all the way on the right. The more you move to the right in this slide, the more revenue there might be for you um, in these uh, in these um, in this practice as well and that's what you see here this is a slide that we that i learned from microsoft in fact um, where you see the more you move up in this pyramid the more margin there can be for you as a managed service provider as well so i think um, there is a lot of opportunities here uh, but the big question is how can we take a step-by-step -step approach um, how can you, you as a managed service provider, how can you take your organization along on this journey, right? It's, it's great if you can make this, this decision on the management level, but there is staff that needs to be trained. They need to feel comfortable do, delivering these new services. Your customers need to adjust to you transforming in maybe a more of a managed security services provider. And that's not something that you do overnight, right? Because the way a managed service provider, a more traditional managed service provider acts and the type of services that you deliver is something completely different when you are a managed security services provider. The, the core goal of what you do as an MSP is mostly keeping systems operational. You do the day-to-day -day business and you make sure that, that your customer can work. Where a managed security services provider um, pretty much ensures that people systems are safe, uh, they should be secure, they should be compliant, should certain compliance standard be relevant to your customer. So the, the, the core business of your organization is shifting and taking that step is, uh, is something that takes planning. Um, it takes planning for you as an internal organization, but it also takes planning when it comes to talking with your customers. And the cybersecurity assessment has proven to be uh, one of the crucial elements when transforming your business model like this. Um, the assessment can be a big help. And I'm sure Brian will also talk about that a bit more 
uh, or at least the two of us will talk about that a little bit more uh, in the next slides. But what we see in order to make to leverage that that public cloud that's out there today, uh, and especially since most of you are focused on on small to mid uh, mid size organizations, SMB uh, organizations, it's important to see that the primary conversation to starter and primary trigger basically for organizations to look at modernizations and, and migrations with the public cloud are twofold. It's cybersecurity risks and options for cost savings. These two elements or these two triggers allow business managers to decide to in, make an investment in, in IT, in, in cloud, in security. So these two factors are, I think, crucial management information that we should get from a security assessment to allow you to bring the right management information to your customer and have them make an informed decision on their IT budget, on their IT strategy, and more specifically, their security strategy. Um, but still, and I think Brianna, you already um, moved into this direction too, still it's astonishing the level of, of security that most organizations have today. Um, we still see huge cybersecurity incidents. Um, and actually one of the facts in the slides here is uh, from the research of, uh, of Zeilemaker 2022, 60% of SMB organizations are out of business after a serious breach. And that's statistics that, yeah, is, is shocking in my opinion. Um, and still the way organizations are changing their mindset, are, uh, are looking at cybersecurity, they don't really see that as a threat. They don't understand what the risk is for their business. Um, and that's the behavior, especially when we talk about SMB organizations, that's the behavior that we are trying to change by bringing the right information to business management. Of course, with the level of detail for IT administrators and IT managers to, to take the right uh, remedial action too, but focus on bringing the right management insights to the organization's board. And that's what we're aiming for with this program. I think I'm gonna briefly hand over to, to Brianna um, to, uh, to inform a bit more, and then we will take you through what the assessment beholds. Exactly. So um, as discussed uh, earlier in the value proposition slide that we have for partners in supporting them in their journey, when we think about adoption services to quantify investment decision-making, which Dennis was alluding to on the last slides, assessments are a great tool for you to get started in uncovering those gaps, both from an on-premises as well as cloud infrastructure way to provide really tailored feedback on some of the security risks that the scan finds and then recommendations within zero to 30, 30 to 60, 90 days plus on how that customer can improve with you as an MSP to support them. So um, we talked about our center of excellence. I wanna bring on on stage, uh, Den uh, sorry, Brian Verberg, who leads up the Western European Center of Excellence and can really talk through that really easy step one through three process that we get partners to go through when engaging with our Center of Excellence and what also the results and process that looks like um, so that you have better clarity of when reaching out to Ingram, how we can support you in your business. So Brian, without further ado. Thanks, Brianna, and good morning, good afternoon to all the attendees. Um, yeah, this slide is exactly spot on. I think we only have three simple steps to uh, to complete um, our yeah what we call CSET quick scan. Uh, the first step is um, that our partners are going to book an introduction call, which is as easy to click on on the book a free cyber assessment uh, button. Um, it immediately pops up uh, the opportunity to book uh, one of our consultants to have an introduction call and give you insight in, let's say, 20, 30 minutes um, on what a CSET is and what is needed. Um, if we go to step two, um, that means that the partner uh, I did identify and prepare um, at least the customer that uh, something is coming around. 
and we are going to sit together and talk about the technical requirements uh, before we are actually going to plan uh, the the the, the CSAT quick scan, which is step three, which is going to be completed um, in half a day up to a day uh, for which both partner and end customer will receive the output of the CSAT. Um, you know, the nice thing about the CSAT is that it is um, a, a tool which is, oh, sorry, yeah, uh, which is bringing uh, great benefits. But um, how it works, um, there is a technical part and um, there is a questionnaire part. What we like to say is that we have a qualitative part and a quantitative part. The quantitative part is that we are going to use technology to scan the environments, the endpoints and systems in the network. Uh, while the qualitative part is more based on having an interaction uh, where a question and answer session is going on based on the questionnaire. And that means that questions are going to be um, asked um, via a form, uh, but there is also interaction between partner and end customer um, to, to get at least the right um, yeah, detail into, into the reports. Um, the nice thing of um, a CSAT is that it is going to know where the threats and risks are within the customer's organization and that it is going to be performed with minimum effort and, and, and a quick scan uh, which we offer as a as a free of charge service um, as said is going to be completed in half a day a day which is very fast to give you insights on on yeah the the risks you have as a company um so it contributes to how do you measure success in cybersecurity or let's talk about the maturity of an organization the most important bullet of this slide is it offers a risk-based action plan for security improvement which means that we are going to provide insight where you need to concentrate on on the first um, the first 30 days and the low hanging fruit items, the, the risky items. And then after that, uh, we are going to concentrate on the six, uh, up to 60 and up to 90 days. The interesting part, what I'm already talking about, is that you are going to define projects and activities for which you have stickiness with the customer as a partner to, yeah, to build upon. Um, Talking about the data collection part, um, yeah, the, the, the interesting part is that you have a hybrid environment and you, you see on the left side that it is yeah, the, the overall cloud environment, uh, Google Workspace, Azure, M365. So it's not only Microsoft related, so uh, CSAT does more than Microsoft. Um, it's it, To be honest, there is a lot of Microsoft in it, but um, it is enhanced with um, Google Workspace, AWS and, and other uh, cloud platforms as well. As mentioned, uh, we have the questionnaire, the data analysis. So the engine is, is an it's an infrastructure application as we talk it um, as we, we talk through with the partner. So we install something in the customer's environment on prem if needed, um, or we are going to install something into the cloud environment of the customer. And it's collecting all kinds of information from workstation, service, Active Directory, um, SharePoint, um, uh, even Linux systems. We can reach um, systems with SNMP, so printers, maybe switches. So everything is going to be brought into the CZ engine. And out of the CZ engine, um, in the quick scan, and there is also a full scan, a differentiator on a quick scan, and the full scan is that the quick scan is up to 300 seats, and a full scan is around up to 1100 of a thousand, up to 11, or even larger if needed. But then we need to do something um, uh, different for that. That it's always going to deliver a report um, as well a management presentation deck. So. Any customer who is having a CSET, quick scan, full scan, any size will get that report and presentation. The interesting part is if you are going to put Cloud Lab into the game and, and which is going to provide to um, um, or at least clarifies and visualize and summarize the, the, the TCO of um, needed enhancements and benefits to migrate to the cloud. Um, 
maybe it's it's good, Dennis, if you are going to tell a little bit more about the Cloud Lab and how it is going to create such powerful business cases here. Yeah, sure, Brian. So, so what we basically do is uh, all the data that gets captured by the cybersecurity assessment tool. So you see all the different elements there, uh, the Microsoft Cloud and all the different other cloud uh, platforms. We see the on-prem uh, environment with the workstations and Active Directory and all of that. Um, that's of course used by the CSET to um, provide insights into the cybersecurity position of the organization. So that's purely the, the cybersecurity insights. Now remember that when, when I had one of the slides there that I was talking about, there's two major triggers for a customer to start migrating their existing or IT to a cloud or maybe to adopt new technology. It's on the one hand side, it's security risks. On the other side, it's actually cost savings. And now what we basically do with the Cloud Lab is we, make, we visualize the financial investments that a customer needs to make in order to improve their cybersecurity posture um, or in some other areas where in order for them to uh, save money by modernizing the environment or migrating the environment, right? So in, in many cases where customers have an existing on-premises environment with their servers uh, hosted in a data center, we scan those servers with the CSAT and actually the CSAT will use the information to, to figure out the security of these servers but the Cloud Lab can use the same information to figure out whether it's feasible or a cost saving element for this customer to migrate it to Microsoft Azure. All right, so that's what the Cloud Lab angle is in all of this. Um, it's a great add on on top of the CSET. It can actually also run as a standalone if, if, if partners are used to work with, with Azure Migrate or other migration tools, you can also use that output and combine the CSET results with those discovery tools as well. Um, so it's a, it's a great add-on to provide a holistic business case to an end customer. Yep. Thanks, Dennis. You're welcome. Fine. Um, yeah, we all want to see how, how such report looks like, isn't it? Um, and looking at the detailed assessment report, you see three elements here on, on yeah, coming uh, from a CSET. Um, the left side is the, the the detail you will get on the first 30 days, uh, but also the SIS score. You see how simple it is going to be presented in in a level uh, one up to four. Um, you always get that management summary, um, which is the on the left side. You have the report, which is maybe a little bit technical, more for the partner. Well, if you are talking with a quick scan, in the, especially in the SMB market, and um, you want to present to maybe the owner of the company or maybe a manager in the company what you have found and what are the recommendations and what is the low hanging fruit? What are we going to help you uh, with in the first 30 days, after 30 days? And on the right side, you, you see that, that that output coming of, um, of Cloud Lab and that you have that business case details and where you are going to have that cost savings clears, clear. So it, it's going to help you where your investments are going to sit if you move to the cloud. Can, can I make a, do a quick add on there, uh, Brian? Yes, sure. Sure. Because I know that that many partners today are actually also also you, uh, leveraging what Microsoft does in Microsoft Secure Score. Oh yeah, um, good point. Where it's a great action list to improve the security of the Microsoft Cloud platform. Um, but let, I think it's it's in by many partners that we see that they compare it against what we do here. I think it's good to to give some comparison there. Microsoft Secure Score is obviously a great action list for you to improve the secure configuration of the Microsoft Cloud Platform. So hands down, all of the recommendations in there are valid and they and, and you can use it to improve the security configuration there. Now, what this report does is it gives the management information for a business manager to decide whether they need to allocate more budget and resources to IT and security projects. So with the list of recommendations of secure score, you will never be able to convince a business manager or a director to allocate more resources. Especially the, the graphic that you see on the left hand side in this slide where you see the CIS controls an internationally well recognized security framework. The organization is scored in this framework based on not only their cloud platform, but also on-prem 
and policies and procedures. So a holistic view to their security posture. And it's presented in a way that even people without an IT or security background, they will be able to understand what, what their risk level is today. And I think that's what we bring to the table here. Secure score recommendations are embedded into the report. So if you work with it, it's part of the CSET as well. Uh, but we bring it to a management level, uh, including the on-prem environment and policies and procedures to give a more holistic view on the overall security posture of an organization. So I just wanted to, to chime in there. Yep. Thank you. Um, looking at the top five attacks, yeah. If if you look at the IT CIS safeguards, um, yeah, that's it's essential um, cyber hygiene, as we call it. So, if if you are moving into implementation of the um, the, the fifty six safeguards there, um, you are going to increase with seventy seven percent up to all the numbers you can see in regards to the top five attacks. So. Every company should at least have an implementation on ID1. Um, and if you look at the right side, it's the all, um, all CIS safeguards, which is up to a total of 150 plus. Um, but also, um, yeah, at least something where you can aim for if your company is larger and you have much more budget and more resources to work on cybersecurity. Um, the first step necessary in SMB and SME is to, to, to reach that level of ID1 and, and make sure that that they are going to yeah, control, have those controls clear and that they are going to be measured um, on a regular basis against that. So by having that said, it's a, it's an, it's a huge step from zero up to 77% if you are going to implement and, and regularly check yourself against uh, those controls for which um, CSET is going to help you out. What is the value for the customer? Um, yeah, we can go over all the the, um, the messages here. The most important message, in my opinion, for uh, what we see performing CSETs for end customers is that we provide them full awareness of their current security status and control of the weak area. So now we have at least a paper um, the report and the presentation, which we can uh, discuss about their risks um, and their items they need to improve. So all the other topics are are very valid, but especially within SMB and SME companies, is is that insight is key here. So provide with a CSAT report, at least create that awareness with uh, within that organization. Um. You as a reseller, um, yeah, the most important thing is that if you want to drive business is that you can use it um, um, as a reseller to um, to make sure that you convince that CISO. And if there is no CISO, you probably are talking with a small company, the owner of that company or maybe a manager in that company. Um, but you also have an opportunity immediately after running a CISA to upsell. I think of that you are going to discuss um, an, an upgrade to business premium and, and leverage all the security functions in business premium, for example, or you are going to address other topics you have found immediately to make sure that your solution or your kind of service you are offering is immediately a topic which you can address um, based on the fact that um, you have findings and that you, you, you are discussing um, and leading that, that customer um, to talk about um, his cybersecurity posture. The interesting part is, is that you have all kinds of steps where you can grow up to the level that you have recurring revenue. And you, you, you sell a CSET license for which you, you can make margin, you perform the CSET assessment, provide consultancy services and make margin on top of that. As mentioned, you have the findings coming out of the CSET and you can do the upsell there and make margin. And the interesting part is that you probably, and there's also a lesson in all our assessments we are performing, is that there is no one time off, to be honest. 
um, you perform an, an assessment, a CSAT assessment or a pen test, it, it doesn't matter, then you need to change something based on the findings you, um, you have. And then you need to retest to see the effectiveness of the changes you made to the environment. And that can be uh, technical, but it can also be processes or even uh, the, on, onto the education level and uh, measure um, if my employees um, yeah, are at least on a higher level with knowledge and expertise to do some exams or uh, certifications there. But the interesting part is that you create a loop uh, based on that you are going to sell it as a periodical service and you can do it on a quarterly basis and immediately implement quarterly business reviews for which you sit four times a year at the table with that customer and um, identify all kinds of opportunities, new projects, and maybe you are going to replace some, um, some technology. Um, Microsoft related or non-Microsoft related, I think of AWS, I think on Google Cloud, or maybe you are going to help them out to replace their uh, total switch or firewall um, equipment. Yeah, I think, Brian, what, what is also in interesting there is that if, if you as a network managed service provider are in the journey to develop your security practice and um, of course, with, with the help of you and, and the center of excellence team, um, you can basically get selling while while building the the practice. That's yep. of course a great great offer from Ingram. Uh, but at the same time, I think if you if you lead the conversations on security with your customer by performing assessments, you can also proactively say to the customer, "Hey, let's focus on identity and access management first. He, here are our services." And then while implementing identity and access management, an existing service that you probably already have, at the back of that, you can start developing, let's say, a document encryption or data protection service that you develop while implementing the first one. So I think it's also a great way um, not only to uh, ensure customer retention, first of all, but it also gives you a way to start the security conversation proactively with your customers, which is important to address that topic today and not wait with it too long because otherwise someone else will do it. Yep. Um, and then at, at the same time, while you address that topic and work on the first remedial actions, you also buy yourself some time to develop that more holistic um, uh, security practice at the same time. Yep. I even heard from several partners that they were able to identify their competitors huh, to uh, to see what they were doing in, in the same customer's environment. Yeah. And yep, by having that, um, advantage that you you perform such assessment, you can probably think of yeah maybe replacing something or making making competitive offer there. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. yeah we, we, some examples here. <laughs> yeah. Go yeah. Ahead, some Dennis. examples. <laughs> yeah. We, we have that nice state, nice statement in the previous slide, high return of investment. But what are we talking about then? And here is some some figures. Um, that are potential revenue, so it's it's pipeline created after an assessment, right? And this is uh, um, if you, for example, sell the CSET as a as a quarterly business review, you can sell that as a as a recurring contract. Uh, you can upsell to new Microsoft licenses, maybe business premium uh, or E3 or E5, and and make some implementation projects there. So here you see a couple of customer scenarios. The top two or an on-prem customer who starts their cloud journey. The bottom two are an existing cloud customer who is basically purchasing the more advanced Microsoft SKUs, but you can mix it up with any other software product, right? So um, we, we're talking a bit more Microsoft language here today, but should you have other solutions uh, and mix it up with Microsoft, that's all good and fine. So, um, so you're good to go there. Yep. All right. Um, next slide, please. Uh, the interesting part um, is that CSAT is, is part of our CUE offerings. It's much larger than only CSAT. Um, uh, we, we have dedicated people working on CSAT based on, on the program we are running, which is um, uh, very successful, uh, where we offer those two free quick scans for, for partner to test um, um, a CSAT. Um, but we offer a, a very large offensive security portfolio. That means that the people who are running CSAT are also offensive security people. 
which means ethical hackers performing uh, penetration testing activities. And, and you can think of external penetration testing or internal penetration testing, where internal, we are already in the customer's environment, or we are going to have a look at uh, your end customers, or even partners are using these services uh, for their own equipment and services and solutions, like, for example, the web applications they provide to us their customers as a managed uh, uh, service provider or managed security services provider. And we, we have all kinds of services which contribute um, um, towards partners. And they are easy to white label. So what we have built here are services for you, for which you can offer to your end customers. Uh, we have all the materials uh, ready. So if you want to offer a phishing service, we have the descriptions, we have the brochures, which you easily can adjust um, with your own logos and your own um, kind of services, no problem at all. So we are a distributor, we are helping you out. And we even can help those partners who don't have the consultant in-house to perform CSATs on behalf of you. That means you are going to buy the license via our cloud marketplace and you hire the consultant performing the CSAT for you. Quick scan, which is um, mostly done within half a day or a day, or the full scan, which is three days or a little bit more if needed. And it's all going to be done in a statement of work and fully complying to your ideas and, and your level, level of quality you want to provide. Have a look at this um, uh, spe specific slide. If you are in the niche like IoT or Wi-Fi, um, we are more than happy to have a conversation about our full offensive portfolio. But if you want to zoom into specifics, feel free to reach out uh, to Ingram Micro for that. Awesome. So I'm going to try and close up. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Brian, for, for speaking so clearly around our CSAT value proposition and what Center of Excellence can offer. Um, we did leave a link in the chat window of how you can request uh, the introduction call, uh, the preparation call, and the execution of the scan. So, Sabrina, if you wouldn't mind just reposting that for our participants. Um, I would love to talk a little bit about registration for Ingram Micro Global Cloud and Innovation Summit, which was recently renamed from Cloud Summit, which we had last year. We are open and having partners register. We have lots of them attending from different sides of the world coming all together in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, it is a newly expanded event, and this year's summit will be exploring the many ways that Ingram is leading innovation from not just cloud, but events and specialty solutions to new and emerging technologies, new trends and business models. I'll be there speaking around growth solutions again. Um, so we hope that you can attend. It's from May 17th to May 15th to 17th, I should say. So within just a little bit over a month. So we hope that you can register and save your spot and we'll see you there. So um, we are going to be opening it up to questions. Um, but before I bring on our partners to speak up and unmute, we do have a next webinar install for April 20th. And I think that this is going to be something that a lot of partners are going to want to attend. But we're basically aggregating a partner panel of MSPs that have built best practice managed services around uh, endpoint security, uh, talking about their experience working with Microsoft, other vendors like Bitdefender, for example, CrowdStrike, for example. And this is going to be talking about their experience building managed services there. Um, so I encourage everyone on this call to attend. I think it'll be a very informative session where you can get examples of how to use what partners have done and, and replicate it in-house. So with that, I'm going to pause. Sabrina, do we have any questions from the chat that we can bring up to Brian or Dennis? Um, let me see. The, we have a quiet audience. You can also just um, raise your hand and we can unmute or you can even unmute yourself and um, say hi on camera if your heart is feeling like that on this Wednesday. Um, if not, oh, there you go. I love it. And 
Constantine, you can go ahead and just ask. Let me see. There you go. Floor is Hello. yours. <laughs> Hi. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Great. I was just hoping to see if you can discuss a little bit more about um, the scenario where you describe, say you're going into a, uh, an assessment, um, the prospective uh, customer has some all uh, pre-existing established relationship with the more traditional MSP, perhaps uh, your practice, as you, you know, as you're demonstrating, is more security focused and you know IT management and practices focused. Um, describe a little bit more about how you work in that kind of a scenario, um, kind of approaching from a standpoint as a, as a partner with the existing MSP. Would you are you position yourself more as a competitor to try also win that business? What what what's that whole you know? Because you you are trying to say that now you're a MSSP, but they might have an MSP. If you can just a little more elaborate around that potential scenario, I'd, I'd like to hear a little bit more about that. Right, shall I take it? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So what what you what we basically see is that um, dependent on where you are today with your your practice, um, you either compete against maybe the more traditional managed service providers that are not there yet or that are very much focused on a niche. Um, and I are not having that security business yet. So you could see it as a as a tool to acquire new customers. But I think what you should always start with, if that's a personal opinion, to be honest, but what I would always start with is making sure that the customers that I have today are sticking with me. Um, and to do that, you need to address a topic that is of concern for every single organization that's out there is security. Um, to, so to proactively inform the customer of the service that you might already have for this customer, uh, you can run this assessment and show them, hey, we are taking care or of these and these security areas. You see that we are managing it for you because you score, let's say, a three and a half on the scale of four in the CIS framework. So that's why, yeah, you should keep our services. But there are also some other areas because you probably don't have the full view. Let's say if we talk about data protection or document encryption and data labeling, that's maybe not something that's part of your existing managed services contract with that customer. So making sure that your customer understands on a business level what do you take care of and what are the, the blank spots in your services that we should discuss that i might need to do myself because it's processes and, and policies that's something that the customer internal organization needs to do but proactively discussing what you do what you don't do and what you can do for them i think that's something that's crucial in your customer relationship, first focusing on your existing customers and then utilizing the same tool set for adding new customers to your organization. I, I, but I just wanted to follow on. Yes, I, I understand more for the situation with your current customers. That's a very clear. It's a, it's a very clear path. I'm more interested in the in the customer acquisition approach for new customers. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm more interested on in how you hand. You know, if they have an existing. You know, generally they might have an existing something provider, something that's doing some basic things, but perhaps they're not good enough. So then I'm more concerned. So then you go and you do the security assessment, you give them all this information, like okay, and they'll just go back to their existing, you know, MSP and try to try to get get it all done with them. So you know, you guys, yeah. we have to do this. Can you do it for us? So yeah. how do you how do you work in that scenario where you're trying to put your resources and time to expanding your customer base, but then you run into that scenario? How do you maybe potentially work as a as a as a, as a partner in that situation? Situation. How do you position yourself potentially mm -hmm. as a partner, but also to then have a continuing relationship? Then do you say, well, we offer specialized MSSP services that are can be fit on top of your stack that yeah. can add value to the endpoints or whatever that your current MSP is doing, or do you try to supplant the MSP? What's the strategy around that? That's what I'm really interested yeah. in. Yeah, I got it. So so basically there are a couple of scenarios there indeed, and I think you already pointed that out. So it depends on, on what your strategy is too. If you really want to compete head to head with the existing managed services provider taking care of it, I think you can do so. And um, the way to do it is basically, well, your managed services provider did not bring up cybersecurity proactively. Actually, I can tell you that within some of the areas that they should take care of 
security, they're not doing a proper job. And I can tell you based on facts from our assessment. So that's putting the existing managed services provider in harm's way, I would say, and it get, gets you to build that trusted relationship. Now, the other angle that you could take is not go head to head in, in a competition with the existing managed services provider. Maybe they have a trusted relationship with your client and you want to add services on top of it where you as an MSSP can add that, right? So then what you could always consider is, um, well, give maybe some of the recommendations of this assessment go to the existing managed services provider. But I think there are many customers out there that would love a third party to review the work that has been done by an existing managed services provider. So I think there is room for two parties to work together in one customer environment too. So, so it's it's, so when it's you a come, choice that you make. So when you come in as a in that scenario where I've also been put in that scenario before, mm -hmm. um, I find that oftentimes you can then go in and provide the reporting, the suggestions, potentially even do some of the work to upgrade and change the systems. But then the ongoing kind of relationship reverts back to the MSP. Yeah. I'm just trying to say it. How would you also insert some of the monthly recurring revenue back to you in that kind of shared relationship um do you then say well you know we can offer our xdr endpoints and stuff that we manage on top of that stack maybe they're not yeah. offering it but then you kind of insert it so you add a tenant and now you kind of become more of the kind of security management side of things and they're kind of doing the systems kind of operational stuff you know help yeah. desk level one stuff you're kind of working in a partnership um, does that can that work successfully? Are there people doing that? Um, what's your experience in the marketplace? What, what you know, what's kind of happening there? Um, yeah, I've seen it work successfully, but I don't know, Brian. What what about you? You offer these services too, of course. <laughs> no, it all it all has to do with becoming the trusted advisor of that customer in the end. Yeah, it's it, it, if if you have an opportunity to open up um, and and create the insights based on the question to offer contra expertise on cybersecurity, you have an opening. There is uh, otherwise there is no reason for that company to do so. If they don't want to start that assessment, there is no reason for it. Um, and then you need to be open and honest and uh, at least trustworthy in, in the recommendations and findings you have and, and the, 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 the portfolio you as a partner can offer to that customer and um, for which they should should see that level of trust. Um, in your organization and then build that relationship. We all know that services selling the lead time to complete that is much longer than selling only a solution, which you can do by selling a SKU uh, or, or a license uh, in the past as we did. A service and the relationship and recurring business that takes investments uh, It's like customer success management. Uh, you need to yeah, nurture that relationship, to be honest. And that takes time, uh, but it, there is an opening based on the assessment. You have a chance to sit at the table. So, um, and that's all and to, to get net new customers in, offer a quick scan, which can be done in half a day, a day with also with respect to the cost to do that. It's an easy yet opener of doors to, to sit at the table and talk about cybersecurity. And you talk about the dirty laundry of that company, to be honest. So there is there is a reason why they are opening the door. Does that help? I think yes, I, I think oh. that yeah, thank you. That, that that adds a lot of good uh, uh, information around that. Um, I think that uh, yeah, at that point you'd have to kind of really streamline your sales strategy and approach. You, you do get a seat at the table. Oh, yeah. And I yes. think that's where you got to get a feeling of what the existing relationship is. And at that point, perhaps you can see an opening that, hey, like we can also take that on or we could just we just we just focus on this. We just focus on keeping your security intact. We keep every quarter. We do updates. We do this. We do that. Keep your existing MSP in place. Um, we kind of add the management security side of it, kind of maybe VCIO side of it in there. Maybe you can insert yeah. yourself in that conversation, perhaps being like a third partner. I don't know. I haven't. I, I'm just. I'm really trying to learn more about that kind of potential relationship. I I know owning the whole thing. I get that, but it's that 
existing model with somebody that's there and it's not always easy. I mean, they could be working together for years too. So it's, it, not it, it's always difficult because if, if, if you have a contract with your MSP or your MSSP uh, in regards that there can be penalties in the contracts too. And um, maybe they say, okay, within the next coming six months, we, we are, we are doing at least creating some insights if we are going to replace our MSP or MSSP by having these kind of assessment. And how cool is it that you get all that intel for free by having that conversation? Yeah. And we, we have that all the time because people are talking. If you are talking about cybersecurity, you tell them the risks, the findings, they will tell you more. And you can e easily ask, okay, what is your firewall? And they will tell you what type of firewall they are using and when it needs to be replaced, if it is end of life. Um, or And there is a lot of intel. If you by doing assessments, you create intel for you, for yourself. Yes, very passionate. Yeah. <laughs> Neil, I, I also see that you have your hand up. Do you want to raise your question to the team? Uh, that would be great. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> firstly, just like to say really quickly, thank you all. I think it's been a great presentation and I'm really interested. Um, my question is around next steps. So I've clicked on the link that sent through and I just want to understand and make sure we got the right thing because we've got an option that says become a partner. There's another one that says book a free cyber assessment. Um, is the are, are we to click the book a free cyber assessment? And yes. do I assume we would run that on on ourselves or would we pick, point. A, pick a random client or what's, I, I what's can the tell process? You. I can tell you the examples we uh, we we have. Um, we have partners who want to do the um, first CSET on their own environment and the second one on a customer. Uh -huh. uh, we even have partners who said, okay, we immediately go for two uh, of our customers. And we even had partners who said, okay, um, you can set us up, uh, but can we use this, the licenses? to immediately play around with it. And I know, Dennis, you you were informed of that as well. So we, we immediately handed over the two free licenses and they were set up as a customer for um, um, uh, for CSETs. Got so, you. so yeah, so, it's, it's so, all possible. We are very flexible on that one. Got you. So just to be clear, it, we, we, it, to, to start the process, I would just tick, click the book, the book, the free side. Yep. I, yep. I ignore the become a partner piece. Are, are, yes. are we all, are we automatically partners because we're we're Ingram, <laughs> Ingram, Ingram things or is is the partner thing nothing to worry about? Just ignore that. The thing. partner thing is nothing to worry about. Yeah. Once you fill in your credentials on the book uh, CSAT, um, uh -huh. you'll actually get a an auto response email that you can book directly with Brian's team. Fantastic. And then get that thirty minute introduction call, and it'll be very seamless from yep. that point on. Wonderful. I'm done. Thank you all very much indeed. I really appreciate it. Of and I look, forward, I look forward to having a better look. Yay, right. good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mark. Thanks. Mark, You've finally. Been very patient. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Good, good day, all. Um, Brian and Dennis, uh, Brianna, my question is around the customer preparation. I want to kind of speak more from a technical perspective. So before we can run the scans, what type of access privileges are we deploying agents? Do we need to kind of whitelist anything? What, what's the technical prep that we need to kind of get uh, get the customer ready for? Yeah, let me tell you, it's not very heavily depending on, on resources. Um, there, there is preparation necessary. Huh? We need to open ports on firewalls to get access to our systems. We need uh, to have a WMI access on, on the endpoints. Um, we we are going to install something in in the Azure cloud to uh, to collect the data from. It's pretty straightforward, um, and they are not very demanding running those scans. So you can't compare it to a pen test, for example, where we are going to heavily utilize the CPU of all kind of systems and sometimes bring them to the knees. Um, so uh, there is an, an, the second step in the in the process is that we are going to discuss the technical requirements uh, requirements into detail with you and uh, the end customer if 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 they need to be on that call as well. Yeah. So, the, yeah. The, so, so and you meet the the actual consultant who is going to perform the assessment. Okay. Yeah. I just want to, you know, all of this it comes down to building in the proper expectations and lead time. So you know, bigger organizations, right? It, it may take two three weeks to kind of open firewalls, right? And and uh whitelist things so just just wanted to kind of 
understand some of those big you're, guys. you're right it can also be the other way around that um, in a small company they have difficulties to find the right access <laughs> so we were waiting for hours and hours to get access to the system so um, we are we are very flexible on that. It's it's you are driving uh, the relationship with the end customer. We are working on behalf of you at that time. Understood. So, um, okay. Yep. Thank you. Wonderful uh, content today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Mark. So with that, I think we can end our session. Thank you so much, everyone, for your questions at the end. Thank you, Brian and Dennis, for your time presenting today. Um, we will have the presentation deck and the recording sent to you by email. Uh, so with that, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Thanks, everyone. All right. Have a good thank day. you. Have a good thank day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.